brought to you almost live from the dude in the basement studios. Why? Because that's where the good stuff is. It sips, suds, and smokes with your smoke and host, the good old boys. It's sippin' time. Yes, it's sippin' time again. Hello and welcome to this Sips episode where everything good in life is worth discussing. As always, we are the best thing on at 2 a.m. This is a one-hour show. Sorry. Um, We're going to try to be somewhat entertaining for... What do you think, Brent? Not 22 minutes. That's I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my jazz hands. That'll make it really entertaining, right? Yeah, especially on the radio. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Right. These are my new jazz hands. Already. Yeah. Yeah. Here. It's, it's scratch and sniff radio. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. 60 seconds in and it's already falling apart. Well, you know, everybody has to have a low target and a goal that is, you know, achievable. <laughs> we are the epitome of that, go. Bob. There you go. We're always, we start we're out always like this, it can mark. only get better. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Well, this is Made Man Bob and joining me today, our Made Man Brent. Uh, it's going to be uh, interesting to uh, be here today. <laughs> As opposed to what, like any other day? or No, to, to not being here. Okay, <laughs> I have to drink. I have to drink stuff I drank already this year. So are any of, of like us a, really a here? Jade, a bouja day? Yeah. Well, right. I'm thinking the options the other way. It's like interesting, not interesting, interesting, not interesting. I mean, what what what, else, what other options were you weighing, Brent, that we just don't know about? <laughs> uh, whether I wore pants or not. Right. Well, no, th- we that's that not answer. really a question. You yeah. know, I definitely know exactly which way that was that's going. Why you know? we'll never be on TV? <laughs> yeah. <Thanks. laughs> uh, well, good old boy, Jason. <laughs> Great to be here. Made man, Maury. Who's working on his sound? Apparently. Apparently. <laughs> and good old boy, Justin. Good morning. So glad I survived this much of the year. Good old Carrie Ann. I'm ready to be best today. And good old gal, Denise. And apparently <laughs> it's not working there either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And good old boy, Mike. 2020. The year I'm totally works. here. I was here at the beginning, the end, the middle. Yes, that's true. Maybe I'll be the proxy for Maury and Denise. Yeah, that sounds good. Well, our sip well, we're segments. Back. Oh, thanks. <laughs> now. Yeah, great. But if you want to be my proxy, that's fine. <laughs> oh, you know that that little blue switch on the microphone that says I, on? I am wondering, am I full of enough crap to... No, yes. I don't think so. Yeah. So full of crap, Foley. Uh, yeah, that I could actually, you know, embody and, and be, you know, Maury's proxy. I, you know... No, 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 no. Everybody's going, yes. They're not nearly meter, saucy enough. Their meter is pegged. you got a ways to go. All right. Well, our sip segments are all about wine, distilled spirits, tea, coffee, and pretty much anything else you can drink. And today's show is our best of 2020 show, where we're going to select an expression that we tried in the last year that we felt that was truly exceptional. Uh, we got a lot of people, obviously, and a lot of ground to cover. So we're going to hear from some of our co-hosts, um, and we're going to actually have a couple of them come in uh, on recording because they couldn't join us today. Uh, But I'm going to ask Brent to use his patented drunk leprechaun. Oh, what do you say about about that? First pick. Oh, thank you, Bob. My first pick is uh, is the best for the best of 2020 is the old Fitzgerald bottled and bond spring of 2020 release. 50 percent ABV, 100 proof. Nine years old. I can hear Blue, everybody Blue in Barstown Green absolutely <laughs> holding their 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 hands over their eyes, going, "Please stop! Please stop, Brent! Please stop!" <laughs> I don't Are think they it's staring a at their leprechaun. radio. Oh, you are never going to get me to stop on I think that. That's one. a leprechaun on crack. Yes, it very is much South so. Florida, so you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, 
So starting in 2018, each spring and fall, a new edition of the old Fitzgerald Bottled and Bond Decanter series is released. Bottled in an ornate decanter, it's really nice looking if you haven't seen it. It's inspired by an original 1850s old Fitzgerald diamond decanter. The series reflects her traditions of both the old Fitzgerald history tied to John E. Fitzgerald and the historic bottled and bond designation. The old Fitzgerald line was first registered in 1884 by S.C. Herbert and was eventually sold to Julian Pappy Van Winkle during Prohibition. Pappy moved pro production of the old Fitzgerald to its Stisselwell of the story where it quickly gained fame. Now, the, one of the reasons that made me pick this bot, this bottle was when I uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to open this up in the store right as it came out. And uh, um, we've had a lot of stellar picks over the over the year. And I base this purely on this when I opening this. The It's got a deep, deep mahogany color, just a beautiful color to it. Uh, it's nice and dark. You wouldn't think that it was nine years. You'd think it was more older than that based on the color. And the nose on this, it's just filled with vanilla, cream of wheat. Uh, it's, it's, when you when you get that cream of wheat nose, it's like, oh, I'm definitely tasting a weeder on this. Um, you know, you can then you get some orange citrus, a little bit of pine. And it's kind of like you just want to nose this all day. You don't want to even stop to drink it or anything. You can just, uh, well, that's good enough. I can nose this, but. And you take a sip of this, you get this nice silky coating on your mouthfeel, all the way from the front of your mouth to the back. You get these big, huge toffee hits, rich, this is a rich caramel, uh, some baking spice. You get all the allspice and cinnamon. You get a little bit of sugar cookies on there. And then, then the finish on this, this is really what got me, is this is just like this huge Kentucky hug. It just doesn't stop. It warms you from the inside out, and you still get all those baking spices. Uh, you got that cinnamon, yeah. Oh, it is. It's beautiful. Then you, it just doesn't seem. It doesn't stop. It's like, well, when it stops, I'll have my next drink. You know, it's it doesn't want to doesn't want to keep doesn't want to let you down. So, um, this is only nine years old, and you kind of think that as a nine year old, it's not going to be. You know what I like about it is it's not over oaky at all. Where some of the other bottled and bond their series of the 14 and the 15 they get a little bit more oak and stuff to them where this one doesn't have quite as much as that it's and i'm okay with that so you know i'm happy with it it's what do you guys think of this of my choice what's your uh sips rating on this here brent well i'll tell you what when we had this on the show we got samples that were not as good as what i got out of the bottle and they're not as good as what i'm drinking here tonight and so, but I give this a Sips rating of five for sure. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. 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 Well, I thought it was an interesting year for this particular product because they actually released a, a wide variety of years, um, even within 2020. So there is the traditional spring and fall releases. So that was the nine year and the 14 year were the ones that hit wide distribution. So Carrie Ann and I actually went up to wide distribution is well, yeah, like uh, one bottle in each state. So <laughs> right, well, I, got, I got the bottle. I got the bottle in Florida, so I'm happy. Some, some so dude, yeah. some dude in South Dakota going what? What? I, I got the only bottle. What? What's up? What, what's up with you? So uh, we actually uh, we're we're in Bardstown for the release of a, of a different product and they actually were releasing the 16 year, um, you know, at the same time. So there were actually uh, three releases of the bottle and bond just this year. And what, what I really like is, is that it's interesting. So last year you guys picked the old fits 15 as one of your best of products. And so it's, it's really interesting that you've, you've picked, you know, another, uh, version of the old fits, um, you know, nine year that came out this year. So uh, that I think says an awful lot for the stewardship that, of that product line that they're having and the quality that they've had, even within a lot of variation of, a, a, you know, from an aging perspective as well. I would yes. agree that some of those older ones are getting like, Real, real woody and out of balance. Um, and just the difference of, in between a 14 and a 15 year old, some of them are really falling out of balance with the wood. So I love the nine year old. 
it's my my favorite of the lineup. It's just because of that, and that's and that's one of the also reasons why I picked you know for my best story of the year the Heaven Hill with all of their different products and stuff. And uh, you know one of the other new products they got is the Elijah Craig Toasted, and my favorite new product. And I think that leads us into uh, Justin. Um, that's going to lead us to you for your pro- product of the year. My pick for the best of twenty twenty is the Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. 94 proof and 47% alcohol by volume. The newest addition to the Elijah Craig line, the process for the Toasted Barrel begins with fully matured Elijah Craig Small Batch, which is dumped and then re-entered in barrel proof into a second custom toasted new oak barrel designed in partnership with the independent stave company. Made with 18 months Air dried oak, which is a pretty long drying process for oak and many spirits. A lot of them will go a year or even less. The finishing barrel is first toasted and then flash charred using a moderate toast temperature and toast time. An extensive research and development process resulted in a final barrel toast profile, bringing forth dark sugar flavors within the wood to create balance of smokiness and sweetness after months of finishing. Only charred American oak barrels are used throughout the entire process to maintain the standards of identity, class, and type designation for straight bourbon whiskey. I really enjoyed this so much. The sweet and the wood balance is really what uh, came through for it came through for me this year on this what did you think bob i think it was a fabulous product had a great flavor profile and i'm just hoping they keep it Four. going so and we'll be back hey and we're back and it's the best of 2020 uh show and justin was just telling us about his pick of the year the uh elijah craig toasted barrel what wait the rest- is it the best of drunk leprechaun show because Brent has that down to a T. <laughs> <laughs> Not drunk leprechaun. It's brain damaged leprechaun. I'm sorry. I always get those things confused. You know, leprechaun after a bad car accident. <laughs> leprechaun who rides a motorcycle without a helmet. Oh, that would be me. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Well, so uh, the, I really loved this new product from uh, Heaven Hill this year. I really thought the toasted was my favorite. It was my favorite new product of the year. And there have been other releases of people that have been doing toasted products. And, I, you know, I've just, it seems like they're just kind of not quite getting all of the everything quite together. I was not a fan of when Michter's released their toasted barrel. In fact, I followed up with Pam and said, what are you thinking? You know, but yeah, I mean, that product has moved through a point of maturity and is really a fabulous product now, you know, in the Mictors line. And I, I love how this is uh, actually, I think this is the homage back to Denny because this is one of the last projects I think that he worked on before moving on to Maker's Mark, or I should say moving back to Maker's Mark. And I, I love the quality of this. I love the fact that they've done it as a widely available product. And I suspect that uh, they're going to move this into the permanent uh, product line for Elijah Craig as well. I would like to know your definition of widely available. Exactly. There's a, you know, it comes out and it's, and it is more readily available than a lot of products, you know, like this limited edition stuff. But there were over 10,000 bottles of this that were available this year. That yeah, I, and, I, and, it, and it is going to be a regular release. They're going to release it a couple times a year and make it a regular release. But I mean, BTAC is, is released regularly. <laughs> and yeah, and there was what, 30 some thousand bottles of the of, of mm-hmm. stag or something. But, but for this being one ordered is by some guy in Michigan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But this is uh this is a great new product. Uh you know, as soon as you as soon as you hit your palate, it's like, whoa, wh- where where have you been all my life? You know, this is uh, this is a nice product. I'm glad that you picked it as your best of 
because I thought it was my best new product. That's why I thought the whole Heaven Hill distillery, while there's some other distilleries we're going to talk about later, this one here, you know, they've been around a long time. They've done a lot of things, and they just do it right. They're not one of these ones that are just experimenting with other people's product and doing it finishes in other people's barrels. They're the ones that are providing it, and those are the ones that are doing it, and they're doing a great job. Yeah, they are. All right. Well, let's move on to our next pick. So we're going to have Maury tell us what his best pick of the year was. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, my pick for the year of 2020 is, once again, the William LaRue Weller Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, coming in this year at 67.25% ABV, or 134.5 proof for those of you who are mathematically challenged. Last year, the Antique Collection's uncut, unfiltered, weeded recipe bourbon received a gold medal at the Los Angeles International Spirits Competition. This year's release was distilled in the winter of 2008 and aged in warehouses I, C, I and C, and on the third, fifth, and sixth floors. Astonishingly, 73.0% of it was lost to evaporation. Uh, the whiskey, uh, that was after 12 years and six months. So tremendous angel share on this whiskey. Um, again, this is a perennial favorite. Uh, although I love the BTAC collection and they're all rare and I hesitate to, to pick a whiskey that's, uh, so hard to get. And following on some of the previous comments, uh, there's a large number of bottles. I mean, it's a crazy number, but they're still incredibly hard and widely distributed in almost every state, but still incredibly hard to get. So wide distribution and easy to get are not necessarily one and the same. But this whiskey is just phenomenal. It's a perennial favorite of mine, as I said. Uh, the color is a beautiful mahogany color. The nose is just amazing, inviting. Everything you want in a whiskey just just draws you right in. And then there's the palate. It's got this beautiful viscosity. It's got layers upon layers of flavor. The longer it sits in your glass, the more things you get out of it. And you can just sort of savor this whiskey uh, all evening. And I think that, uh, that that would be my take-home point is uh, don't rush it. This one is really meant to be savored, to be enjoyed. And, uh, again, you can just uh, wallow in the finish because the finish just goes on and on. On and on and on and on and on and on exactly. and on and on. Yeah, I love it. I got to call BS. He didn't hesitate to pick this. This came out of his mouth the minute I asked him. He didn't hesitate <laughs> for one second. His, all he said was, do we have any? <laughs> Well, so yeah, I think the challenging question I back to you, Maury, is, I mean, so this is a product that's been available now for, you know, quite some time, you know, year after year. What makes this particular year so special for you? Well, like I said, uh, the, the hesitation was not uh, hesitating to pick it, but I, I believe I actually picked uh, the same whiskey last year. And uh, again, this year... <laughs> This year, so Brent is saying yeah. Brent is saying no. We'll have to go to the tape to find out exactly <laughs> where that where that wound up, Maury. Uh But uh, you know, it just it really just stood out for me, uh, head and shoulders above everything else. Uh, we don't give out a lot of fives. This was certainly a five sipper for me. I think uh, oh it was unanimous goodness. on the day we recorded. Yeah. And uh, like I said, it's just got the whole package. It's well balanced. It's not too oaky. It's not too hot on the palate. It's just right, like Goldilocks. Well, I know a huge fan of this version is uh, good old boy Jason, who is just uh, singing the praises of this year. Yeah, I thought this release this year was just absolutely fantastic. I mean, it's just the perfect balance of sweet and spice, but also hot enough to where it just smacks you in the face that you're drinking cast strength whiskey. Yeah. And what's really funny is you both love 2019 to death. Um, and uh, in fact, we were actually sipping on, you know, 2019, you know, as much as just two months ago. And uh, I never thought that Jason was going to move on to saying there's something else that I like more than this until this year's came out. That's so true. 2019 just spoke to me, but this one is just singing from the top of the house, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And it's no easier to get, unfortunately. Uh, again, large number of bottles out there in wide distribution, but uh, just equally impossible to get. You've got a thousand bucks on secondary. It's really no problem. 
<laughs> or if you know a uh, good old boy Mike, I mean, he's the one that'll really bring it home for you. Right. Yeah. I'm the guy with all the master connections here. <laughs> sure. Uh huh. Until, yeah, he, until, he, until he pisses them off, you know. Yeah. <laughs> really fascinating how many of our fans, uh, you know, PM me every time you guys mention that. And I'm going, dude, I'm not your hookup. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, I checked. Maury picked King of Kentucky last year. King of Kentucky. I already knew that. Well, That's there you go. go. And that was, a, that was a great pick for this year, too. But Must I didn't have been 18. Do you have my 2018 oh. pick, Andy? Of course. So <laughs> let me run down to Iron Mountain yeah. and pick it up think, for you, Harm. I, th- I think it was <laughs> Bibb and Tucker. I think you had picked Bibb and Tucker that year. A white dog. No, yeah. I was going to pick Bibb and Tucker, Brent, but you had already taken that. No, he right. had picked Boone's That's Farm. That's right. <laughs> right. Boone's Farm, um, Strawberry Hill. As, uh, as far as uh, adding a couple other little tidbits, for me, the best... Uh, New product this year was the Four Roses Small Batch Select. I thought that was really a phenomenal product. Uh, I think it fits nicely into their lineup, and uh, and I, I really, really enjoyed that. I think they finally fixed it. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I think. Yeah. You know, yeah, there's a couple of heads nodding around that one. Yeah. I would totally agree, because uh, a number of us went to that release last year, and I yeah. was underwhelmed to be nice about it and this year i cracked a bottle open with our friend dan and i suddenly like saw it with brand new eyes but it was a brand new bottle so i am thinking that it changed and i really i've gone through three bottles of it um in the last few months which is oh, very oh. unlike me well you didn't so invite me it tastes wow all of a sudden is that your covid uh, plan carry on i don't this remember is. it being that memorable <laughs> last year but uh but but this year uh it's like a new product and it really uh it really sang to me it's really so, been and enjoying i think for it. the money i think for the money it's hard to uh it's hard to beat i think it's a great value and a great product and uh and ding, lastly ding, ding on that yeah um, you're solid. in terms of my uh, best <laughs> distillery i really think that uh, old forester's killing it uh they've really mm. just done some amazing stuff the whiskey rose series has been amazing the uh, birthday bourbon is a perennial favorite and then of course the king of kentucky is uh you know b- beautiful beyond words and the yeah. 150th yeah. and of course the oh, 150th yeah. yes president select i mean they've really got a lot of great products many of which are not widely distributed but if you can get your hands on any of them they're all fantastic yeah and that uh you know is a good flow into uh, my short list of things i absolutely think that chris morris and jackie zykin is uh uh, as the uh, master taster, have been absolutely killing that entire product line and uh, knocking it out of the park. All those products have been really good. So the thing that is uh, really hitting uh, the market um, as the airs are a lot of the single barrel cast drinks and uh, really fantastic. And it shows you the wide diversity and quality of a lot of the products that they have to work with of creating uh, many of those other products that you mentioned as well. So I really have to hand it to them of recognizing that there's an inflection point with uh, such great quality whiskey that they have to work with. And I really suspect that that is going to be a something that's going to happen for a long period of time at Old Forester as well. I don't think this is a flash in the pan at all. So uh, really No, great. they've had a long history. They've been around for a really long time. And they've just got depth in their portfolio and obviously depth in their whiskey stocks that uh, they can pull things like the King of Kentucky out from nowhere and it, it just sing and shine. Well, I have, the, to Mike. I have a short list of a, a, a long number of things to go through. How's that work out anyway? So listen, <laughs> first off, my, uh, my top whiskey of the year is actually going to be uh, from the States at Lux Row. It is the double barrel 12 year. Uh, this is at uh, 118.4 proof. It's actually a blend of two barrels. Uh, so this very full flavor, uh, hints of baking spices, just a really fantastic finish uh, off this as well. Um, at least uh, 12 different releases of this, about 3,600 bottles uh, became available uh, this year around this product. So um, really great. I actually ran into uh, Zeke from uh, Dad's Drinking Bourbon uh, just a couple of days ago. Um, and he, the thing he really loves is he loves the heavy weighted cork, um, on this thing. You actually can use it as a handy weapon, <laughs> you know, if you want to. I mean, this thing weighs like 10 pounds, just the cork alone. It's actually metal wrapped. Uh, so if you could see it, 
Listen, uh, you can hear all about our comments on Luxro Double Barrel on our Quick Shop edition. Uh, it's episode number 2076. Well, actually, uh, the name of that episode is called Mine Is All Gone. And uh, we went through Yellowstone Limited Edition as well as this uh, Luxro Double Barrel. And you can uh, check out our extended comments on that as well. Well, I had a couple of other products to chime in as well. Uh, in addition to a lot of these great whiskeys we've talked about, we had a lot of great gin episodes uh, this year as well. I really had such a fabulous time with Carrie Ann and Craig coming back and refreshing our gin catalog. And uh, we really got to gush and talk about um, a yeah. really fabulous gin from Freeland Spirits. Um, so if you uh, even have a fleeting chance of getting a hold of a bottle of uh, Freeland Dry, do it. Um, I actually used it as a pregame uh, cocktail uh, for our episode tonight with a really fabulous gimlet. Uh, I barely could pry my way, of, uh, you know, away from that uh, glass uh, to um, talk about everything else tonight as well. Uh, Top Rum is uh, actually from Foursquare. Our great friend Richard Seal um, put out a lot of great products this year, and I kept on mispronouncing this the whole time. I kept on saying Nobilary, and it's No Bill Uri is the uh, correct uh, pronunciation of this. Um, I really love this product from Richard. Um, you know, he's produced a lot of fabulous uh Finnish rums and uh, bourbon and port and, you know, a tons of uh, other uh, secondary finishes. And this is just the embodiment of a lot of time and energy that Richard has put together in producing really great rum. This is also my top pick for cigar pairing uh, product this year as well. I have already killed two bottles of this, and I'm well on my way to uh, probably a couple more of these. So, really, you might have a problem. Yeah, that's a, time we had a talk. It's generally how it starts, and you know, it kind of works its way down from there as well. So, I would encourage anyone to, uh, if you have the uh, access to that product, uh, definitely pick that up for a hundred bucks. Wow, it is an absolute steal. Uh, all day long, as well as a lot of great rums, but uh, this one for sure. Is there Just, an age uh, statement on that one, Mike? No. Uh, there are some aspects of age stating the uh, finish off that, I believe. It's a nine. I don't, can't remember off the bat, more. I want to say it's a nine year that's actually finished off for uh, another year or so in each of the bourbon cask uh that were associated with that as well yeah, i was just curious but yeah it sounds like an amazing product we have not gotten a chance to try it we've been too busy with all these new bourbons and whiskeys yeah let me look that up uh in between us talking and i'll chime back in with the particulars on that particular product i'm sorry i just don't have them right in front of me but that's a typical move for richard is to finish stuff off you know in, in a bourbon uh last product that i wanted to mention here is uh coffee I am looking so forward to going through some really great coffee with Mike Love, who is one of our new co-hosts that's going to join us. He is a cup of excellence uh, judge, and uh, I am looking so forward to going through a lot of great coffees for a very long period of time with him. Mm, but I wanted, to, I wanted to talk about my top bean here is from Costa Rica. It's Las Lajas. Um, is the name of the estate that this is from. This particular product is called Perla Negra or the Black Pearl. And a couple of my tasting notes around this. Great sweetness and a soft grape and red fruit tone balanced by this dark bitterness. It's actually, it tastes like a coffee version of a jelly toast. Um, so it has a little bit of a slight uh, cranberry overtone to it. Really unique uh, finishing process. They actually dry the beans out on a raised bed. So it actually creates a very consistent product. Um, and so you don't wind up with, you know, like, you know, a third of the beans are really great. And then two thirds are just, eh, you know, um, it really has a very consistent element to it. So a really uh, a couple of really great natural versions of this are available from this estate. The other one is called Black Soul. Uh, the only difference is, is that they don't air that one out on a raised bed. Actually, just throw it out on a patio and let it kind of air dry. But uh, really fabulous bean. Um, and I have had just 
pounds of it this year, and I suspect that there's probably more more of it in front of me as well. So uh, that's a quick wrap up. None of that's made its way down to Fort Lauderdale. Well, you All know, those pounds. So you are willing to trade William Lerwella for Costa Rican coffee? Is that what I'm hearing you say? <laughs> no, here, I didn't say that. That's what I heard. He drinks Sanka, please. Counselor, is that what you heard? Nescafe. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I, that's, there's I'm enough lawyers. Sharing is caring. Yeah, so three lawyers versus one doc that had a really crappy uh, a trade in, in progress. That's what I heard. Uh, <laughs> so should have asked for 50 pounds. But, yeah, it's. Uh, I think it, uh, some of this can definitely make its way to you guys. So. Uh, but that's uh, some of my best of highlights uh, for 2020. All right. Well, we've got Mike, so let's go to Harm and see what his best of pick was. Let's uh, let's uh, just uh, we have uh, only 30 seconds here for a break, and uh, we'll maybe we'll yeah, pick we up Harm after the break. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why don't we talk oh, well, about that's... Harm for 30 seconds? Oh, he's a miserable <laughs> son of a. <laughs> Only thirty seconds. I can't really hardly I, yeah, get anything I, out. Yeah, I, I any surprises? To talk about. Any big surprises so far out of any of our top picks? I'm surprised that Maury can't remember his pick from last year or the year before. <laughs> there you go. All right, and we're back, and we're going to have uh, Harm tell us about his pick of the year. Thanks, guys. Uh, it's, this is good old boy Harmeet, and uh, I'm nobody cares. Sad I couldn't join you in the basement today. But I'm enjoying life on my yacht. Bob, put in some sound effects for me. Anyway, Band, uh, why am I on my yacht, you ask? Because that's the kind of money you need to drink the whiskey I picked for this year's best of. <laughs> Unfortunately, I went a little bit over the normal budget I use. Previous years, I've picked my best of whiskey to be something attainable and easily, uh, you know, generally not a unicorn that you can find. And, you know, under $500. This time, I blew that out of the water. Belvini, Day of Dark Barley, 26-year-old, 95.6 proof. Goes for close to $1,000 in the U.S. these days. And uh, it's worth it. You need to have it. If you can't afford it, make friends who can't afford it and have them buy it for you. At least get a dram somewhere. I've tasted many more expensive whiskeys over the years, but this one really left a mark because it tastes like whiskeys that spilled it out several shirt. times this amount. Uh, it was gorgeous. Um, you can listen to episode 366 from July and hear us uh, wax rhapsodic about it. But let me tell you a little bit now. The, the color was gorgeous. It's a beautiful glowing gold. And the... Nose is what struck me. Bob called it citrusy creme brulee. To me, it was orange marmalade and on like toast because you could taste that toastiness. I think that roasted barley brought that toast level to it. And um, it was like ginger spice. As it evolved in the glass, it went more apple-y rather than citrusy. Uh, then it tasted, smelled like almost like hotcakes off the grill, pancakes, if you will. But um, maybe a hint of maple. I didn't think I caught it at first, but wow. It's just so rich and beautiful and inviting. And I wanted to just smell it all day. But we had a show to do. So, you know, I was forced to drink it. Woe is me. Let me tell you, the mouthfeel of this whiskey is something else. After 26 years in those first fill bourbon casks, it was a butterscotch and just mouth coating unctuous joy just blew me away. Uh, even Brent liked it. How's that? Brent, do you remember that one? Brent liked it and wanted to hear more about whiskey making from Scotch people, from Scottish people. Don't believe that. <laughs> it, uh, let me say this. It's a, it's a whiskey that I wish had a longer finish only because I didn't want the flavor to go away. But you could count to 100 after taking your first sip and still be tasting it. The finish is ultra long. I just wanted to keep going on. Uh, it's something that could take a drop of water if you needed it, but I didn't do it. Uh, our samples were too small. But think of it this way. We had a small sample from the distillery. It was split five ways, and um, I still remember it. I'm still yearning for it. 
I know where there's a couple bottles, but my wife might kill me. Um, I'm going back to my pretend yacht. Back to you guys. Thank you for having me. Well, I gotta get. I, I I've got to agree with him. I mean, he picked that one before I did, so I let him have it. And I've never seen you was, agree with him. It was it was one of my top one or two whiskeys of the year. It was absolutely stunning. Well, if, if I was forced to drink scotch, I would drink it. Yeah, it was just oh, it was so damn good, and so, it, just, it lasted forever. Actually, Carrie Ann and I ran into uh, the local rep from. Um, uh, from Balvenny, and uh, it was a really great. Uh, it was not this particular version, but it really caught our attention. It uh, was one of the. I want to say it was Scotch of the Week, Scotch of the Day, um, Scotch of the Month. I can't remember how that series runs uh, for for them. Peat but of the week, Peat of the week. Yes, no. thank you very much. A, I, no, 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 I, no. A get week there. of Peat. Week of Peat a was really good. Peat. Yeah. Is what was, I said. Yeah, it was really fabulous. And uh, I have a week I, Pete. Yeah. It, so if you want the budget version of what uh, of, of what uh, harm pick, that, that is probably the other uh, choice I would throw up is uh, it, it, that really has a lot of the same taste profile, but maybe it's just not as rich and as full. But uh, that was exactly a, a year ago when we went to whiskey events. Yeah. And well, and what was funny is, yeah, that was actually at a it was a uh, whiskey tabernacle, which was before a huge beer event uh, that uh, we went to as well. Hey, I had a, a quick technical follow up on uh, uh, Maury's uh, question about the rum that I had. It's actually a so the Foursquare Nobel Uri, uh, as I can say it correctly, maybe one Nobel. <laughs> I sound like a sound like a diction machine. I know. So uh, it actually is a 14 year uh, age stated product that is actually finished off in uh, ex bourbon barrels. So it is actually a blend of pot and column still products. Um, is what that is. So uh, Thank again, you it was, for that follow up, Mike. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so I didn't want to sound like a total idiot all through the entire episode, but. Anyway, I return us to our regular program here as uh, Bob's going to shine in with uh, this really fabulous hard bag. Oh, my God. I'm sipping this right now. Holy crap. All right. So my my pick for the best of 2020 is the hard bag Trivon batch two. It's a 92.4 proof, 46.2 ABV at 19 years old. It's the second release in the Trivon series. Is this available as a body butter? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I mean, I use it as cologne, um, you know, a little behind the ear and a little bit underneath, you know, in the taint, and you're ready to go. Wow. Um, oh, oh, my, my God. God. This is so good. Yeah, it's just, it is absolutely, I mean, it, it's, it tastes, if you've ever had any of the older art bags from, you know, back in the 70s, you know, it, it's got that body and that character to it. This it's, could actually repel Jason and Brent at 500 yards easily. That's fine. I don't care. <laughs> that that taint <laughs> right. That taint right. Takes a man to drink real whiskey. So um, just, I mean, it's it's matured in American oak and older so sherry cast, 19 years old. Um, it is just, just little bits of just sweet wood smoke, a little bit of tart creme fraiche. A little bit of just a little bit of fennel and roasted tea leaves, and a little bit of nose of just slightly burnt toast. It's not smoky, smoky on the nose, but on the palate, mm, it's so just it's it's like seawater salty. It's got just the slight bit of the medicinal to it, not in your face, but just enough to give you that 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 beautiful Iowa feel. And a little bit of salt and eat, a little salty peanut brittle and uh, like cooked pineapple. It's wow. just it's a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous dram, and I think it's I think it's one of the best things Ardbeg's done in a long time. So uh, I'm guilty of actually tasting this in real time uh, on our episode here um, for the first time. Wow, I mean, holy cow! This is. You know, we, we talk about things that have a measure of balance and elegance to them. And I even think that those adjectives are vastly short of just how well, you know, this is really pulling all this off. Um, this is definitely that Isla product that a lot of people would go, this is not something that's going to club me over the head. This is just a 
very soft on ramp um, to a really wonderful, you know, constructed product. Um, this doesn't come in with the peep brigade that just would beat everybody over the head with. And I really love just how um, complex uh, this can really be um, because a lot of people just, they can't, you know, a lot of products from Isla, they, they get that peat bomb and they really don't even enjoy a lot of the other things that are there in a lot of these products. And this is a great example of just how complex uh, things really can it's be. It's just got such finesse and there's so many layers to this. It just, it, it, it evolves in the glass, it evolves on the palate. It's like it's a just, peat marshmallow cake. Yeah, it's just, it's <laughs> so, yeah, just I, so I actually good. have to agree with you guys. I think that the uh, the Oloroso Sherry Cast really added a dimension and really helped kind of round it out. And uh, and you're exactly right, Mike. It's not just a typical peat smoke bomb. It's yeah. just complex yeah. and really, really interesting. And, and and they've had some great releases. I mean, they did the Wee Beastie, which if, you know, there's a big difference between a very mm-hmm. young Isla and a very old Isla. They're, they're two entirely different animals. So and that was fabulous. And the drum release from about a year ago, I, I still don't know why they haven't made that a part of the permanent line. That that one was amazing. Yep. But but this that, this drive on is just this is the kind of this is the kind of thing you want to be buried with. It's just so good. It reminded me of s'mores at a campfire. It was amazing. Yeah, really great. Um, so what's your sips rating on this, Bob? Uh, 36. 36. It's oh definitely a five God. all the way for. Uh, for me, for sure. And then for, for, for this year, for the best distillery, um, you know, I, I thought about Balvenie because, again, that day of dark barley was so good. And, and um, the ton 1509 this year was spectacular. But I got to give it to Old Forrester. I mean, they just they just constantly are cranking out just top end product. Um, and and I, it, this was a tough pick, picking the Trivon. Like I said, I, I thought about the Dark Barley, but I let Harm have that. I thought the Ton 1509, but that's so bloody expensive and so hard to get. Um, you know, some great stuff. And then the best new whiskey that I had, the Elijah Craig Toasted Oak was great, but my pick was uh, a little bit different. My pick was from Japan. It was a new release from Nika called Nika Days. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, just for the money, absolutely everything a Japanese whiskey should be and could be if they really made it well for a very, very reasonable price. Just bright and sunshiny and light and just so many layers of flavor in it. Just absolutely lovely. They really knocked it out of the park with that one. So I love this uh, choice that uh, Bob's come up with. It's very emblematic of the previous product that came out with, which was uh, Nika straight from the barrel. And uh, uh, if you, this one's better, I'm telling you, if you did not, yep. If you did not catch our episode on Nika days, it uh, was just a few weeks ago. You can step back and uh, definitely check that out. But uh, I think that both of these products um, have really come around and demonstrated specifically what Japanese whiskey can really bring to the table for an everyday, you know, sipper um, that are just really amazing. And I, I think that it's a, at times it's tragic that that is not on the back bar of, you know, a thousand restaurants in the U.S. Um, and the nice thing about this is, is you can have it on the back bar. This is, it's a great whiskey, but it's, you, if you want to make highballs with it, you can, you can mix it because you can afford to. It's, uh, they, they really nailed it with this one. They did a great yeah. job. I love how Jason and Brent are looking at us like crickets. <laughs> No, come on, come on! I tasted and reviewed this. I thought it was. Uh, he uh, actually, he really liked it. We I, all, I really loved good. it. You know, yeah. I mean, I was able to give it an honest review. So, I mean, it was. Yeah, Brent. Enough, Brent actually enjoyed but, this one. But I'm he, not. He gonna finished bu- his whole glass. But I'm not going to buy it. As no. opposed to your typical dishonest reviews. I get those all the time. Perfect. Mm-hmm. But that's what that's on his other gig where he does sex toys. So. So, so leading out of that, okay then, <laughs> let's, Denise. Let's go to Denise and see what her pick of the year is. Well, hello. Uh, I'm sorry that I missed the original introduction. Um, I guess technical difficulties, but here I am. And I blame Maury. See all of you. Well, I do too. Yeah. But, you know, only you can say that, Bob. <laughs> so my pick is actually um, Weller Foolproof. 
Um, this is actually a private pick. And so, unfortunately, or fortunately for Murray, he was on the pick. And so he introduced this to me, and I immediately fell in love with it. And for the Weller Foolproof fans, you know, in June of 2019, Buffalo Trace launched Weller Foolproof. And its foolproof moniker doesn't mean it's bottled at barrel proof, but instead that it is bottled at the same 114 proof that the original distillate was entered into the barrel. So this one was absolutely amazing. I wish that all of you really could have tried this particular pick. I would have um, liked to, but he, apparently it, he forgot our phone numbers well, when he was doing that pick. <laughs> so uh, I love yes, that well, you I picked this. Polished it all off. <laughs> I love that you picked this, Denise. And, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, we've been really fortunate, um, to have over 50 plus, uh, you know, stores that have done this, uh, in the local market, Middle Tennessee. And we've tasted nearly all those barrels. And it's, it's really great to be able to see the, you know, the extensive, inventory that Harlan gets to work with, you know, at Buffalo Trace and uh, really kind of expose a lot of people to some really great products. But, you know, there's been a curve, you know, there's been some really, you know, great picks and there's been some that are not so good. So, yeah. Um, hey, we're uh, running short on time and I want to give Carrie Ann just maybe uh, 45 seconds here to talk about her top pick. If you have one to chime in here real fast, Carrie Ann, sorry. Seconds. Sorry, I went long, so it's my fault. Typically. So I am going with the approachable everyman kind of. You can actually go and buy this. Is I am a big fan this year of the Wild Turkey Rare Breed Barrel Proof Straight Rye. I think it was a great product. I'm excited that they're adding it um, into their line. Um, I hate to see that it's being called allocated in some markets, but it reminds me of my grandmother's house. It's full of like the cedar and like pine notes with um, like cookies baking. It has like vanilla and fruit cake. I think it's really special, balanced, beautiful little rye. Good old boy Jason here for my top product of 2020. My top product of 2020 is Blanton's Straight from the Barrel. In the winter of 1881, Albert Bacon Blanton was born into one of the first families of bourbon history. At the age of 16, he started to work in the distillery as an office boy and fast became a leading pioneer in the development of bourbon. From the time he was made company president in 1921 until his retirement in 1952, his distillery expanded from 44 to 144 buildings to become the largest distillery of its day. During that period, Colonel Blanton created his very special and limited supply of bourbon, his private reserve, handpicked and stored in what is now known as the famous Warehouse H., Although Colonel Blanton died in the spring of 1959, his legacy lives. The Blanton's brand was launched in 1984 when Elmer T. Lee introduced the world to Blanton's single barrel bourbon a year before he retired. In doing so, he revolutionized the industry with the world's first single barrel bourbon. Blanton's Straight from the Barrel was the third version created after the original 93 proof and gold 103 proof. This cash strength bourbon is beloved amongst connoisseurs. My tasting notes on this is dark chocolate, nutmeg, spices with a hint of vanilla and sweet corn. The color is a dark amber with slight charcoal pieces because this is an unfiltered cast strength whiskey. The nose is a slight smoke with some clove and a huge hit of alcohol. The finish is long and super oily and this flavor profile will stick with you for a long time. I also wanted to say my favorite distillery once again is Buffalo Trace, but I would also like to give a shout out to the Uber distillery in Indiana and their product Starlight, 
which I think is going to be an incredible newcomer to the bourbon and whiskey scene for years to come. My shout out for my favorite new product of 2020 is Old Taylor 18 Year Marriage. I very much look forward to Buffalo Trace getting into blending their old stock to come up with new flavor profiles. Thank you. All right. Well, that's all the time we have for today. We hope you enjoyed this episode and you can catch all of our episodes where you found this one as well as on terrestrial and satellite radio and online at iTunes, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, TuneIn, YouTube, PRX, and pretty much any place you can listen to a podcast. The easiest way to find this show is to ask your phone, uh, ask Alexa or Siri or, or whoever the woman is on your phone that talks back to you, play podcasts, sip suds and smokes. And hit the subscribe button. That way you'll always be able to listen to us. We love your feedback. You can reach us online at info at sipsudsandsmokes.com. Our daily tasting notes flow out on Twitter every day at Sip Suds and Smokes. And our Facebook page is always buzzing with lots of news and reviews. I want to thank our co-host for joining us today. Thank you, Brent. Yeah, I just want to say that we, we eliminated Jason because he picked a blends product. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank, thank you, Jason. Glad to be here. Thank you, Justin. Thank you so much, Bob. <laughs> Thank you, Carrie Ann. My pleasure. And Maury. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Bob. And Denise. Thank you, everyone. And good old boy, Mike. Hey, I like Jason in spite of the fact that he picked a Blanton's product as well. <laughs> Come back. Join us on another exciting episode of Sip, Suds, and Smokes. I'll ask you to keep on sipping. Another? You're implying that any of them are exciting? Tan Hand production of Sip, Suds, and Smokes, a program devoted to the appreciation of some of the finer slices of life. From the dude in the basement studios, your host, the good old boys, will see you all next time. (laughs) 